All right, welcome students. We're going to be talking about exponential population growth in this lecture. So I want to talk about a little story um, that happened to this guy named Thomas Austin. He was an Englishman who migrated to southern Australia to farm the land. Um, on his property um, he, that was located um, near Victoria. And in October of 1859, he was homesick for his land of England, and he missed um, hunting the types of things that he would hunt. And one of the things that he would um, enjoyed hunting were, were rabbits. So Thomas asked his nephew, who was in England, to bring some, some rabbits down to his uh, property in Australia. So he brought a couple dozen wild rabbits down to his property in Australia. And he basically just, Thomas then just released these on his land. He thought that this was not that big of a deal, and he had no real idea of the drastic consequences that this was going to have. And because rabbits can reproduce, like rabbits, right? They uh, quickly were um, increasing in numbers, and, and um, Australia was a very suitable climate for rabbits. So within six years, this population that started off as just a couple dozen rabbits, 24 rabbits, had increased to 22 million rabbits in just six years. By the 1930s, Australia's rabbit population was estimated to be over 750 50 million rabbits. So you know, if we look back on this story, you know, what, how is it the population grew so large, you know, so quickly? And, and, and then obviously what we'll want to do is in the future think about what do these consequences, of course, have on the ecosystem. So to do this, let's simplify this and talk about pennies for a moment. So I want you to imagine that you have 10 pennies, okay, and that each penny represents a rabbit. Let's um, take those 10 pennies and let's put them on the counter. And let's just assume that anything that comes up tails will reproduce. Anything that came up heads will not um, survive. Okay. So if we were to just do this, you would you could randomly think that about five of them should end up tails, right? And so we should get in ad in addition to the ten rabbits that we already started with. If we allow them to reproduce, right? About we're going to assume that of the um, of that initial population of ten, that five of the rabbits in the next generation survive and then are added to that initial 10 rabbits so that you end up with now 15 rabbits. And if we keep repeating this procedure where every time we look at the total population and we say okay about half of the po half of the total population is probably going to be generated in the next year um, and so this way we're kind of taking into account birth rate minus death rate and if we kind of did that um, rate of increase. This is what the graph would look like a little bit over time. So notice here we have the number of generations on the x-axis and on the y-axis the number of pennies or you know rabbits in this case that that would be reproduced. And if you start to draw lines you can remember that the slope of the curve is determined by the rise over the run. Right? So you go from your y over your run, over your x, your, your increase in y over your increase in x. And to begin with, you know, when we went from 10 to 15, well, that's not much of an increase, relatively speaking. There's a little bit of a slope there, but not a lot. The next, then you move down a few generations, and the slope has changed now a little bit. It's a little bit more steeper. And you move down a few more generations, and now the slope is steeper. And you move more, more generations, and now the slope is steeper. And so the slopes gradually increase. The more individuals that you have, obviously, if you take you know, half of those individuals and assume that that's, those are the babies in the next generation, then of course you have more individuals. And so the slope is, is greater each, um, with each generation. This type of a curve that we're forming here is, has a J shape. And a J shaped curve um, is also called exponential growth curve or when we're talking about ecology, exponential population growth is what we're describing. Well, how does this type of a curve affect the rate, or how does the rate change based on this curve? So to look at that, we need to kind of come up with uh, an idea of how, of, of how would we calculate rate. So to do this, let's kind of think about from one generation to the next what's happening. So remember we went from 10 individuals, they all had, they had five babies and so then we had 15 individuals in the next generation. 
So what would be the rate? Well, the rate there would be 0.5 because we increased ha um, by half of the total population size. If the total population size was 10, we increased by 5. That increased the, the rate at which it grew was um, 0.5 of the, of the initial population. And then if we assume that that happens again, where we have 15 individuals and, and then they end up having you know, eight babies survive, then that's about half. And so you end up with another rate of 0.5. And what you see is that over time, the rate is always 0.5. So we can kind of think about that the, the general equation for rate of this little r. So rate little r is equal to the generation two, in this case we're looking at the first and second generation, but this could be the the, the the current generation minus the previous generation all over the previous generation divided by the previous generation. So generation two minus generation one divided by generation one. And of course, that is 0.5. That's what we just figured out over here as we went down through each of these. This is also called the biotic potential. So we're assuming that on average, about half of the um, there are going to be about half the number of offspring as there are number in the in the total population from one generation to the next. And that's called the biotic potential. Now we just we just randomly kind of assigned that on the um, coins here because we assumed that if you flip a coin, you have about a half a chance of it becoming a tails. But let's look at like more real data. So here we're going to look at some rabbits. And this was data that came from a, a different um, place, not Australia. But they looked at rabbits and they said, OK, at generation 0, OK, we have 10 rabbits. In generation 1, we now have 18 rabbits. So what happened? So we went from 10 to 18. So that means it added 8 rabbits, right? So we can calculate the rate from this. The rate equals 18, the generation 2, or the next, the current generation minus the previous generation, so 18 minus 10 divided by the previous generation. So 18 minus 10 divided by 10, that equals 0.8. So that, for these data right here, the rate is 0.8. And so if you then use that rate, you can then calculate or estimate what the population will be like in each succeeding generation. You simply just take the current population and times it by the rate and then add that to the current population, right? And you end up increasing and you get larger and larger and larger and by generation 10 you already have 3,500 rabbits. So how did we do that? Again, we took, how did we go from 10 to 18? 10 times the rate, which is 0.8 equals 8 babies, so then you just go 10 plus the number of babies that were calculated from the rate and the, and the previous generation. So 10 plus 8 equals 18. And that's how we calculated those. And all the way down, that's how we, that was done. So we've now come up with kind of a general formula for how do you calculate from one generation to the next. You take, to, in order to calculate the change in a population from one generation to the next, so that's what these fancy things mean, delta here, is the change in the big N, which is the population, so change in the population um, over the change in the time, so that's from one generation to the next. You can simply say, what's the change in the population from one generation to the next is equal to the rate times the current population. And that's um, how you can figure that out. So. Um, this is an, a quick introduction to exponential growth. Now, what we want you to do is, as you, as, as you leave this lecture, think about, is it possible then that populations continue, can continue to grow at those rates using that kind of J-curve? Is, is that possible in the real world? So think about that. Clearly, the answer is no, because populations they're, they just can't. They would, we would be overrun with all of these populations. There's not enough resources to go around. And we're going to focus more on that as we move forward through this ecology unit.